the whole barbering world, they discriminate against women. Not that the barbers hate the women. It's just there's something there. Everybody voices that same opinion. Like that was put in your head for many years because I went through that same thing. Occasionally there'd be a woman barber and I'd be like, hell no. Nah. Like, and, and, and for no reason. Like if you think about it, like. Like they went to fucking school to learn how to cut hair. Like they didn't know how to cut hair. <laughs> it just it's just I don't know. Like a, like a dude who doesn't have a beard, is it just straight baby face? I be feeling like, damn, does he really know how to cut a beard like correctly? Of course they do. They went to fucking school. They should. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you never know. I mean, there's there's some stuff like that though. Like a uh, tattoo artist that has no tattoos. You might feel some kind of way about going and getting a tattoo from that person. But there's some tattoo artists that don't have tattoos, and they're fantastic tattoo artists. Just uh, one of those perception versus reality kind of things, you know? All right, boys. <laughs> On that note, we got a, a, a little bit of a sticky situation for us men. Even sticky maybe Sticky situation. <laughs> even for uh, even for the ladies probably too, but mostly for the men. And then it's fucking barber wars. Oh my god, I forgot what the topic was. I was trying to figure out where that intro was going. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck are we talking about?" <laughs> I love it. Barber wars, boys. This is a a a, a real fucking thing. That people don't understand. Get a haircut from your man's you've been getting cut with. One day he can't get you. You get a cut from his boy who can also cut really good. You start going to him more. Or you you know what I mean? Boom. Now when you go back in, your main man says, Yo, what up, nigga? I, I didn't get you booked today. What are you, are you here for a cut? Oh yeah, your man's down there. Now it's eyes like damn. They put the pressure on you. They give you that look. Oh, word. Mass silent. They're not saying, oh, word. And then it starts beef with the barbers. I mean, we've all gone through it. I've gone through it. Pujo's definitely gone through it. Like, I can't even call a certain barber up because he, I know he won't try to cut my hair no more because I get cut by the other man. So it's like. He got fired as a customer. Yeah, barber, barbers are the only people that can fire their customers. This shit is a strange, like, <laughs> fucking interaction. But they'll be like, I don't like what you're doing. You're you're not coming to my chair no more. Go away. Not only that, but the longer you have a singular barber, the more shit they try to do in between your, your haircut. I'm like, nigga, I came here for a haircut, not to wait for you to do a bunch of goddamn shit up in this <laughs> fucking place. This nigga's in here got got three different uh different businesses within his barber shop. He want to be doing all sorts of shit. I'm like, yo, nigga, I came here for a haircut. There's I'm like, hold hold up, I gotta go sell some burner phones real quick. <laughs> there's levels to different barbers, right? Like we all got there's there, there, we got the what the casual barber who just cuts, chilling. We got the barber who wants to talk a lot and stops the cuts. Then we got the barber who takes his shit too serious, got mad products, got mad lights, got the, you know, he's doing the top most. Then you got the barber who be on like, I don't give a fuck, nigga, I'll fuck your shit up. Like, if you, like, you know what I mean? Like, these are barbers that we've all, I've, I encountered every single one of these fucking barbers. Then you got the pothead barbers whose hands just smell straight like weed and they're around your face, touching your face and that shit is just like, yo, my nigga. What are you doing? You're touching my face with your dirty ass hands. I didn't realize pothead barber was a whole genre of barbers. Yeah, I'm going to be cigarette, honest. There's cigarette barber. Oh, yeah. There's there's the cigs. Barber. <laughs> this, I forget about the cigs. Those are disgusting type of hands. You know, on my rough days where I'm craving a cigarette, the only thing that really stops me is remembering just how bad like that cigarette smell is. Like It just sticks on everything. It just seeps into your pores, basically. Yeah, that's just disgusting, bro. You know what I hate too, though. Like barbers, right? Like God forbid, after you're cut, you look in the mirror and you see like something like is off, and oh, you I'm go telling and tell him to them, fix it. Like, yo, can you adjust? They'd be like, 
they like look at you and you feel like kind of kind of a way like damn like like I just 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 no pressure like just you, know, you feel like you bothering them yeah like, bro. Your, your line will look like that slanted and they'll look at it like Yo, you you sure that you see a crooked like it's like bitch you know what I'm looking at don't play I, yourself now I got a haircut one time and they obviously slipped while they were like doing like the, the, the you know like doing the thing on the side right they slipped a little bit wasn't a big deal but I pointed it out and instead of owning up to the mistake they tried to convince me that I had that it might be an early sign of like alopecia or something Whoa. like that. They're like, maybe you always had like really thin hair there. I was like, mm, I don't think wow. so. Yo, that's your barber, my nigga. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't think so. Yo, I was like, I know the hairline nah. slipping a little here. It's not. There's no patches of hair just missing on the side of my head. That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, they violated you. That's a violation. Alopecia? <laughs> Bro, I've never heard yeah, of that's that. That's a word that came out of their mouth, dude. They were diagnosing me. They were a medical <laughs> professional all of a sudden. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that is Yo, insane. you wouldn't have any eyebrows. Uh, listen, I'm not I'm not about to make fun of the that shit is terrible. It's a disease and people should be aware of it. Maybe we should do a fundraiser because I definitely am not trying to make fun of people with alopecia. I didn't think we were making fun of people with alopecia. I think we were making fun of my bartender, my bartender, my barber that fucked up my hair You're and tried to diagnose me with a medical condition. Yo, that's so beast, <laughs> bro. I, you know, bro, you know what's another thing I hate too when it comes to barbers. Luckily, the barber I go to now, I don't really have these many problems. He, he cuts my hair, and I'm happy. But before, these certain barbers have a signature move. Or a signature cut, right? You got barbers that are the pushback king. You got barbers that hit you with that fucking Drake 7 gum chew line side shit. You know, where they hit you with that quick corte. Then you got barbers who, I guess, I don't know what it is. If you ask for too much, like, yo, give me a blowout with a with a skin fade rounded, blow and blend it in with the beard. Like, they'll be like... Like, they're trying to convince you, like, nah, you need to do this. And it's, you know what I mean? Like, I don't get it, bro. I'm paying you for a service. Just fix my shit. That's it. I hate to feel like I got to bother the person. <clears throat> Excuse me. That That is, <laughs> like, cutting my hair. Shit is That shit is stressful. It's, it's hard to- enough to find a barber that you trust and that you're willing to, you know, work with. Because now... This barber is important in your life. This isn't this is this is an important person in your life. You can't fucking you can't fuck up with the barbers. You can't because how do you how do you choose a new barber? Do you do y'all go like word of mouth? Do you look at reviews? What what is what is y'all's method? I'm I'm a I've, I'm a review man. I, I I I do so many like Google searches and reviews and but and you shit probably like go that. to like supercuts or some shit like. Ah. It's fucking supercuts. No, know, man. I'm a grown ass man. I don't go to supercuts. Because, <laughs> like, the all barbers... the respect to our listeners that go to supercuts, <laughs> all the disrespect to them. Nah, because <laughs> we go to like, up. we go to like hood barber shops, right? Like, you know, they're, they're not hood, but like, you know, like, they don't, I don't know if they have reviews for each individual not one. Not all hood barber shops are good barber shops, by the way. Let's no. just put that out there. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, they got those one in the one or two cutters that can cut. I, I I am going to bougier barbershops than y'all probably, but it's because like, how do you how the fuck do you tell what is a good hood barbershop, right? Like it's it's word of mouth. I've got I, like it's it's uh like like you said they don't have Yelp reviews. They don't have fucking websites exactly. Typically. And I want to <laughs> piggyback off what you just said. I I knew off rip you went to a bougie place when the motherfucker told you you got what was it Lipper Shell? What oh, was it? Oh that that no that that was that was not at one of these bougie places. That oh. was like a an emergency haircut at a random barber shop that I would happen to be like driving by. Nah, you can't do those, Mattel. You don't do <laughs> ran, you don't do rando barbers. I've been in a happy relationship with my barber for maybe a better man. It's about to be almost 20 years. <laughs> I've been like 14 years with the same barber and um, we're, we're happily married to each other. <laughs> That's Your barber's going to fire you after they see this episode. <laughs> 
Nah, no, Peaky, that's my man's 50 grand. Pinky. You know what I mean? Shut up, Peaky. My boy Peaky. Mas, el Maestro Peaky. Oh, he's Dominican. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, what you time, call a hood barbershop is really like, like in, in New York City and shit like that, it'd be like a Dominican barbershop. Like. And I like barbershops like that. Like niggas talking shit like a, like, you know, like a, like a, like a, every, it's just like a sanctuary. You come here, everybody's talking their shit. Like yo, this blah blah blah. This that. Like I like barbershops like that. I don't like these supercut shits that out there will be going to. Don't go to supercut. <laughs> Where is this? It's coming. That should be like they make an appointment and they like print a piece of paper for you and you walk in. There. <laughs> nah, the barber situation's crazy. I had I had a I had a barber one day was so busy he was like. I know you made an appointment, but I can't cut your hair. It was like, yo, get your haircut with that guy. He's good. I got my haircut with that guy, and I remember talking to Doe about it. I was like, yo, he fucking laced me, bro. Like, I need to keep going back to him. But now this other dude's going to feel some type of way. And it's a drama. It stresses you out. Like, that's that's stress. Like, the fact that you got to deal with. You're, it's almost like a little breakup. Like they're like they're gonna feel rejected. You don't want their feelings to be hurt. You just want them to know you're moving on. It's not them. It's about yourself. You know what I mean? Facts. You like this haircut better. Facts. Yeah. One time I uh, was living all the way in Queens, and I was making my commute to Washington Heights every couple of weeks to get my barbershop. There was a few weeks that I was just like, man, fuck this. I'm gonna find the new barber. <laughs> I went to a barber. I was looking. I was like, I remember going in this area and I remember seeing a barbershop. Let me walk over there. And I think it was me and Jesus. And yo, this barber was on the street hailing people to come. <laughs> he saw that I was looking and he was like, come on, come on. Hey, he felt your energy. You, you got to hustle, man. Yo, he fucked. My hair <laughs> up, bro. Bro, he fucked my shit up. So bad so bad that I waited like a good three, four weeks to go till I went back to my other guy. And as soon as I walked in the barber shop, he's looking at me. <laughs> he knew. He's like you went to another barber in Spanish. <laughs> he's like, yo, you've been to a different barber. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I cut it myself. And he's like, bueno, siéntate. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was mad disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> That's he's, beast. he's not even upset. He's just disappointed. <laughs> he was quiet. The whole barber. He's quiet. Yeah, That's um, that pressure. I think being a barber, man, you got to have a big ego. And then whenever something like that happens, your ego gets shattered. That's a Should fact. Said. That's a fact. Yo, in high school, I had a friend that cut hair. And we all used to get a haircut with him. And then in another friend group of mine, there was another guy who used to cut hair. And he was like, yo, let me cut your hair. And I was like, nah, I, I, I get my hair cut by this other guy. And that's like, half of it is like some barber war bullshit. But the other half is really like, I trust how this guy cuts my hair. Like, you might fuck my whole shit up. It got to the point where this guy was begging me to get a haircut with him that he got mad at me, like, on some fighting shit. Like, he just was upset that I was refusing to get a haircut Wait, with him. he was going to physically fight you because I over you get not a getting a haircut with him. If he won the Sorry. fight, were you going to have to get your hair cut by him? He's going to hold you down and shave your head or something? <laughs> I guess that was the strategy is bold. <laughs> that shit is extreme. See, and it goes straight from that to hailing people on the street. <laughs> yeah. Bro, uh, let me ask y'all a question. How many barbers have you had in your lifetime? Because I can Too tell many. you, so mine's, is, mine's is not even a handful of barbers. That's how crazy my shit is. I had a lot of barbers until I met my barber now. So I had a bunch of different barbers. I remember going to the establishment Pacino's in West Palm Beach in like Green Acres. Pacino's. That, that was the that dude's doing well off for himself. No facts. He has several Pacino's now. 
Um, and I remember going there. I remember going to several different places, um, but I never had like a steady barber. I my mom used to take me to Supercuts when I was a child. When I was in like uh, elementary, middle school, and stuff like that, my mom would take me to Supercuts, and I met this nice Jamaican lady who taught me about tea tree oils, my dear, my dear. You need the tea tree oils. She sold us the tea tree oils, and it's helped me with my scalp, my pariasis. I have really bad pariasis, um, which is like an itching scalp. is crusty. My scalp gets crusty in the edges. It's not fun. Bañate, muchacho. It's not about washing. I don't think. I don't think it's about washing. <laughs> it is. It, it's like a. It's like an irritated skin kind of deal. I don't know. It sucks. Bañate. Wash yourself. He's tight. Niggas tight. But no, I only had three barbers. One was a Puerto Rican cat in Orlando when I when I moved up there. Hold on, hold on. Y'all don't have dandruff. That's what that is. I have dandruff. I've, I've got I've got eczema, man. Like I I I, I flake all. I also all over have the place eczema. <laughs> I have a little bit of flakes. But you're, what you was describing was something far worse than a little bit of flakes. You should you should have seen me when I was a kid and I didn't know how to control it. Dude, the, the shit was bad. The dandruff that, that I had disgusting. was terrible. Yeah. Bañate. The, a bath will help a lot, though. Heated, like, heated. all that excess that's just hanging around your head, the mm-hmm. wash, the bath will wash that like, away. It Uka? can exfoliate, like, but it could, it could also make it worse. Like, there are, uh, yeah, Tony, there, there are skin, there are definitely skin conditions where washing is not the answer to solving that skin condition. Facts. That's why dermatologists exist. <laughs> also, Tony, to your point about you having three barbers ever, some of us, I guess, just aren't as picky and aren't as needy with with our hair. You only trust one person here and there. Shout out to my barber, Jason, for the family barbershop, yo. Shout outs to him. That man's been cutting my hair since fucking high school. And a and barber I went to off a recommendation off of Pucho and of Brian, his brother. I, that's how I met my barber Jason. Now he couldn't like he couldn't get me to get uh, I couldn't get a cut with him because he was too booked because I came in like kind of last minute. So he pointed me in uh, Jason's direction, and then I go back and forth for both of them, and then I just started just going more with Jason because it was just like he was always like you know yo I cut your hair sure like he always like helps me out when I always came in like kind of a last minute thing. So I just kept cutting my hair with him, and ever since then I, that's who cuts my hair, but. Yeah, I don't really. I, I try not to fall into these barber war shits. Yeah, but, my my hair isn't that complicated, honestly. Like I do with the double edged safety razor on my beard, so I don't care that much about going to somewhere where they're gonna give me the nice little like beard trim or anything. Got, a, I've got my own little like tools that I use to keep my shit in line. My my barber goes all out. He gives you the icy cum shit, the icy cum drip. <laughs> puts it what? on there. It's like numbing. It's like icy and numbing. It's the best. That's, that's why you got dry scalp problems. No, dude. All you need is a hot ass towel and then some. That's and after. A sh- that's and a after good- the hot towel. He puts the icy cum drip. It's like it's like for the no. edges and shit. Hot, hot yeah. towel in the beard. Then you get your double edge safety razor and you just trim it up. Facts. Because I'm calling it an icy cum drip. He puts not, this cream. No, and the I, cream I, no, is I, really good. No, I just I just don't feel like the cream does anything. I I, I feel like it's just all about the hot towel. You need the hot good. towel. That's all you need. Like, look, I got my cut like a week ago. My shit started coming in. I cut myself with the blade a little bit. Ooh. It just nicked me. Oh, damn. You got yourself pretty good there, actually. Yeah, dude. It, it nicked me. But it's whatever. But yeah, no, nah, like I like I'm gonna like going to the barber, getting on the the hot towel and the and the black mask. If they got the black mask option, fantastic. Your skin's gonna be fucking glowing. It's gonna be clean. But you, hey, let me ask you a question too. At some point, you went to your barber. It was like twenty bucks. When they jacked up the prices on y'all, do you guys feel the type of way? How much do you pay uh-huh. for your for your cuts? What is your average? My cuts like thirty five dollars. Okay, yeah, my, and that's like including that. tip. Oh yeah, that mine mine is pre tip for sure. Oh here's okay, but yeah, about thirty five bucks and. 
the, I, when I worked when I worked at a, this big company, they actually gave, had like uh, discounts through a bunch of different places, and uh, uh, one of the places that I went to just happened to be like part of their discount thing. So I just tip them like the amount that it was discounted plus whatever I would have normally given them. Nice. So those 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 people took care of me when, when I went there. <laughs> to the listeners out there as well, it's okay if you go to Supercuts or whatever; it's your preference. But a man don't go to Supercuts. My son, he just got his first cut. Boy's nine months. And when I mean cut, just scissors. His hair was way too fucking long. And, you know, putting it up in a, in a ponytail kind of hurts his hair. It was ripping his hair and shit. So we gave him a little fresh cut. He wasn't ready for the edges yet. He's too young for that. He don't need clippers to his head. You know what I mean? But when he came out of that barbershop with his dad, the man was a new, he felt the new, I seen it in his face. He felt the new man energy. We all feel that shit. We take a picture. We look ourselves in the mirror. We got the fresh I, fit at the house. I think, I think that for most people that are just getting like a basic ass haircut, I think super cuts are actually fine probably, but I have had every single worst haircut that I've had in my life, except for one or two, Happened at a fucking supercuts when I was a teenager. <laughs> so your, your your mileage is gonna vary because there's a lot of different range of skills of people that working at supercuts. It's a lot of people's first job out of out of like school. So there's a lot of people still learning what the hell they're doing when they go there. Just be wary. <laughs> and also the ignorant version of myself back in the days when you went to a barber shop and you saw a woman cutting hair, I would be like, she is not touching my hair. Like, I always felt like that, like a woman would not be able to cut my hair like how it needs to be cut. You know I what I mean? I always preferred women to cut my hair when I was when I was a teenager. And I didn't what, trust men cutting my hair. And that was just me being young and dumb. Like, there's chicks out there that can cut hair just as good as guys. Like, it's just, it's like you know, nah, sex you, is... You weren't, you weren't being young and dumb. It's the fact that, like, the whole barbering world... They discriminate against women. Not that the barbers hate the women. It's just there's something there. Everybody voices that same opinion. Like that was put in your head for many years because I went through that same thing. Occasionally there'd be a woman barber and I'd be like, hell no. Nah. Like, and, and, and for no reason. Like if you think about it, like, it's like they went to fucking school to learn how to cut hair. Like they didn't know how to cut hair. Like. <laughs> It just, it's just, I don't know, like a, like a dude who doesn't have a beard, is it just straight baby face? I be feeling like, damn, does he really know how to cut a beard, like, correctly? Of course they do. They went to fucking school. They should. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you never know. I mean, there's there's some stuff like that, though, like a uh, tattoo artist that has no tattoos. You might feel some kind of way about going and getting a tattoo from that person. But there's some tattoo artists that don't have tattoos, and they're fantastic tattoo artists. Just uh, one of those perception versus reality kind of things, you know. Yeah, it's like going to a, it's like going to a trainer who's overweight. <laughs> like, like you're gonna help me, my nigga. Like, you gonna, you gonna show me how to? <laughs> I'm about to get in shape with your ass. Nah, no, I'm not. And then, nigga. and then you go to them and you get in the best shape of your life. <laughs> then you think to yourself, like, who do you need to help you out? Like, there's no. That's way. his problem. There's not another trainer that exists like him to train him. It's crazy. <laughs> Yo, Pooch, what's your average cut cost? So, pre-pandemic. Damn. I haven't been to a barbershop. I've been to one barbershop since the pandemic started. I got my hair cut by a barber one time. This is what... The Mr. Clean was birthed out of COVID-19. Um, I had an afro. And I was like, all right, this look is like that. That's like junior high school pooch. I need to get away from that. So I, I, try, I tried just growing it out. I didn't like it. Then I cut it off. So I don't know what my cut would be today. But pre-pandemic, I was paying $36. $35. Yeah. That's about and it. my barber was down to complain about, about his tip. Wow, yeah, no, yeah. He complained about his yeah, tip. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Cause 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 they're <laughs> they work in service. So you, you have to tip them apparently. Yeah. Which I think is ridiculous. I feel like 
set your price, the price you wish to be paid, and I will pay it if I think it's a fair price. When my my barber put his prices, $32. That was the price of my haircut, $32. I was like, I'll give you a $3 tip just to call it a cool $35. I'm like... I'm not. He's, I'm not yeah, paying. He's got to know if he's doing thirty-two. You know what I mean? People are just gonna go to the first like thing that feels good for them, and a thirty-five is right there. I I do. Uh, my barber does what they, I think it was almost the same. He does thirty, but I give him the ten. I know what you know. It's twenty fucking twenty-two. You can't my, fucking survive off of that shit. Um, it my, takes. It takes almost an hour and a half to cut my hair. It was like an hour and 40 minutes, my last. So, uh, you know, I feel Why? like... Yeah, yeah, it's it tripping. takes how long? I It's a pretty lengthy barber cut. An yeah, average cut I get, should be like... Sorry, an average cut should be like 40 minutes tops. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, my barber does a whole bunch of shit in between my haircut. It's a little annoying, but... Yeah, that's I, would drop that, I, would, I would drop that tip back a little bit. <laughs> no, it's all right. He's I taking his it. lunch break on Do- <laughs> when Doey comes sometimes, to get cut. Sometimes Do- he's Do- like... Can I eat? But I don't want him to eat cold food. You're not gonna. I'm, that's my man. So I'm not gonna have him eat cold food. I, I as, need a cut. As, as I've got as I've gotten older, I'm gonna speak to you from a place of experience. I have realized that nothing is more precious to me in my life than my fucking time. Max. So I'm not spending two hours on a fucking haircut, especially Max. if it's two hours because he's walking around eating food and cutting Max. someone else's hair and talking to the cute girl next door or whatever the fuck. Find another barber. <laughs> Facts. No, it's, he's not that bad. He's uh, he's a great barber. You're ready to sit on the train for two hours to get to that place to and from. Max. No, he's right up the block now. Oh, Shaving my, okay. <laughs> my own head was one of the best things I ever did for my own time. Like the fact that I don't ever have to take time out of my day to go sit in a shop when someone's like, oh, I could cut you at 11 o'clock and then it's 1.30 when you're getting your haircut. Fuck that. Like, I hate and that. Then once, and then it's a fucking 45-minute hour haircut. It's like, oh, I used to fucking hate getting haircuts when I was a kid. Like that whole and like that whole shitty feeling of being in a barbershop for a whole day, it was fucking trash. That's terrible. That's one I of the best it. things. My barber had like an app that I would like set up appointments and shit like that. And his show would be like 11.30 is when you show up. I would show up and seven times out of 10 at 11.30, he would be cleaning the chair off for me to sit on it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> That's the type of Once we got too cool, he was like, yo, I'm going to run to the store real quick. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He'll be like, yo, I'm going to run to Wendy's. Do you want anything? It's like, nah, I didn't come here hungry. Like, I don't want to eat your food. I want you to cut my fucking hair. Like, yeah, let let me eat a big bowl of chili while you're cutting my hair. I like that hair that gets into it. It really pulls it together. <laughs> All day hair just floating around in the air, landing on your fucking food. That's disgusting. <laughs>